today I am going to talk about calories and tracking versus non-tracking. All calories are, are a unit of energy and there is a, it's great to start by calorie counting just to gauge how much you're actually consuming but it's not always right for everybody so some people just should not track calories and you can still make progress even if you're not logging every single morsel of food and one other thing even if you are tracking your probably not tracking 100% accurately. There have been studies where even dietitians when asked to track their calories have underreported on how much they're eating. And that's not because they've just decided not to log certain things. It's just sometimes you just don't take certain foods into consideration and drinks in particular. So liquid, liquid calories is a really easy way to go over your calories without really realising. And also additional things like not really being aware of what a teaspoon and a tablespoon are. So if you're going into your peanut butter jar thinking you've got a teaspoon, is it actually a teaspoon? Or are you under underestimating how much how many calories are in that particular spoonful that you've um, that you've scooped out? And other other things to take into consideration are if you rely heavily on um, pre-made meals, they have a 20% leeway on their labelling. So if it says it's got 500 calories, there could be 20% less, 20% more. So just another thing to be wary of. So not tracking. Well, like I said earlier, you can still make progress without tracking. And there are various sort of dieting methods you can use. But today I am going to focus on using the palm method to gauge your portion control. So a really easy way to manage your portion control is by using the PAR method and you've got protein, carbohydrates and fats. So have a full size PAR, full size palm portion of protein. So that could be like a chicken breast, two fillets of sea bass because you want the thick, so it's a full palm plus the thickness. Uh, so you can have two fillets of say sea bass or two fillets of salmon. Uh, and then with that, you will then have two fistfuls of vegetables and that should take up around half of your plate. Then you have got a fistful of cooked carbs. So your rice, potatoes, bread, um, pasta. And then you finish off with a thumb sized portion of fats. So that could be your uh, sauces, butter, nuts, seeds, avocado, so that is the basis of the PAR method. And this method would only work if you, if you choose to eat wholesome foods the majority of the time. The reason it wouldn't work if you had highly processed foods all the time is because they are more calorie dense. So they won't have the satiety levels that wholesome foods will have. And you would need to eat a lot more of those foods to feel satisfied and that would in, would end up taking you over your calories. So try using the palm method and you know it does take a little bit of getting used to, you know trying anything new obviously it it does take time. But as soon as you start adjusting to this way of eating, you'll find that you start making progress. You do need to give it at least 2 to 3 weeks to start seeing progress. And with the palm method I would suggest, suggest you have three main meals and two snacks of your choice. And if you stick to that method and not eat outside of those three meals and two snacks, you should start to see progress. Another thing I would like to add is protein. A lot of people don't eat enough protein. And not only is it for muscle repair, but it also keeps you fuller for longer. So look to increase your protein intake. And I would suggest eating between 25 and 30 grams per main meal and also include it in your snacks. So easy ways to up your protein intake. You can include protein shakes because they are not just for bodybuilders. And my protein do some excellent prote protein powders. So I'd aim for 
a whey isolate and you can actually also get clear whey isolate which is more like sort of like a squash type drink and my protein again like do a really amazing bitter lemon flavor i mean these are just my personal preferences but there are loads out there just just give some a go and see which one you prefer um, you can also do um, buy pro, uh, protein bars and for Phil, do a really nice salted caramel flavour. Um, another one worth giving a go. And then also things like your um, egg whites. You can buy cartons of egg whites now and they're normally by um, the pastry aisle. So what you can do if you're having scrambled eggs, and ha you can have like one or two whole eggs and then... Top it up with 100, 150 mils of um, egg whites. And not only will that up your food volume, but it ups your protein intake as well. And the good thing about egg whites is that they're so low in calories and they're practically pure protein. So that's another handy one. Um, also, you've got your yogurt. So you've got things like your kvarg, skia, Arla do some really good... Um, uh, pouches of yogurts which have like 25 grams of protein so include more lean meats so chicken breasts turkey mints and um, for example like when I do a bolognese I tend to do 50% 5% beef mints and then I add a 50% either turkey thigh or turkey breast mints so it's just another way to reduce calories without compromising on flavour and taste um other protein sources so you've got dairy which is also a fat but you know you do need some fats in your diet um just trying to think what else have we got we've got cottage cheese and you've got things like um pepperamis as snacks baby bells there are so many ways to increase your protein intake so maybe just be a bit more mindful of maybe hitting that 20 to 25 grams of protein per per main meal and then also just adding some some form of protein in your snacks as well so hopefully this helped and any questions just drop me a message